Hello lovely people and welcome back to another episode in the Project 5 Wear series that I have running on my channel this year. This time we are going for the Pat McGrath Subversive Palette. In case you guys didn't know that this is how she looks like. It is an absolutely beautiful eyeshadow palette. I'm not going to say too much about it now because we're going to leave that for the end of the video when I'm going to give you a couple of my uh, review thoughts. Also, I'm super excited that this video is also a collab video. I'm doing this Project 5 Wears together with my lovely friend Bia here on YouTube. Bia and I have actually collaborated before. Over the summer we did a video where we talked about our personal five favorite uh, European brands. I'm going to leave that up in the cards for you to check out if you're interested. I absolutely love, love, love Bia. I can't even remember how exactly I stumbled upon her channel. Um, her channel is fairly new. I think she only started posting videos consistently maybe about a year ago or something and I don't have any clue how I found her channel. But once I saw one of her videos, I immediately clicked on the subscribe button because I knew this is someone that I can connect to. And I've talked about this a little bit before, that for me personally, YouTube is not a platform for me to make money or to in any sort of way have a commercial success. To me, YouTube is a place where I can talk about my friends or about makeup over coffee. Like, we cannot really in real life get together and, you know, have brunch and talk about makeup, but... This is a little bit how we do that virtually. For me personally, that's how I feel about my channel. Without going off on too many tangents, Bia is one of those people that I feel like if we lived in the same city, we would hang out on a weekly basis, we would have brunch every Saturday, and after that we would head out to Sephora to swatch things and buy makeup. I'm sure of that. I hope that someday she and I can actually meet in real life because we both live in Europe. She's actually lived in the Netherlands for a pretty significant amount of time and I'm hoping that she has a little bit of nostalgia and she wants to come back. If we ever meet in real life, I promise you we're going to do a video together. But I absolutely love her. Go check her out. She does reviews. Like me, she buys a lot of eyeshadow palettes and she reviews a lot of eyeshadow palettes. She's very... Uh, eloquent, she's very fun to watch, she's super chill. Watching her videos is one of the most relaxing things that I can think of doing in the evening after a hard day of working and taking care of baby. So, without further ado, I'm just going to leave you with the looks that I created with the subversive palette and I hope that you're going to enjoy them and get some inspiration. So, let's kick off our subversive Project 5 wears with a, I think, fairly uh, simple look to execute. I just really wanted to use this uh, lime green shade over here because it's one of the most stunning shades in the palette, one of the most unique ones at that as well. Again, as usual, Pat doesn't really give you much of variety when it comes to the matte sort of like transition-y colors. So unfortunately, once again, I have a brown through my crease even though I would have loved to have like a sort of like deeper matte olive green shade that would pair so beautifully with this guy over here. I understand that it might not look so great with the rest of the shades but honestly I could have like substituted this brown here, the metallic brown shade, for a deep dark olive green. It would have been just... it would have made so much more sense with the palette. If that were my palette though, it's not. So due to the lack of other sort of uh, matte shades that I can start my crease with, I did go in with the browns. I kind of mixed the uh, matte brown over here together with this satiny metallic sort of uh, brown. I don't really know why, I don't feel like there is so much of a difference in their tones, but I just think that the metallic sort of shade just makes it a little bit easier to blend and it's just, it's so buttery, it glides off so easily on the skin that kind of mixing the two makes it like even more easy and quicker to blend your crease, if that makes any sense to you. Then I applied a tiny bit of this black shade to deepen my crease together with the deeper brown, so I didn't make it too black, I didn't want it to be like too overwhelming black because I think for me personally I prefer to uh, really deepen my crease with a black shade and like pull it out when I'm not going to wing a liner. Then I applied a glitter glue and I packed this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful topper shade over here which is like a antique green gold situation super beautiful then i applied this vr pink shade over here in my inner corner and as expected that shade turned out to be way too dark for my inner corner so i did go in a little bit with this shade here the champagne goldish kind of shade over top of that mixing the two also created i think a beautiful effect so i'm not really mad about the result and then i was kind of wondering what to do with my lower lash line 
and I was hesitating between the uh, blue purple shade over here and the berry shade and for some reason I thought that the combination of the antique greenish gold shade with the berry would look really bomb so I did that. I kind of just thought okay let's go for it and I have to say I feel like the two shades look really pretty together so I'm really not mad about the result. That's how I finished off the eyes basically. Oh no wait I'm lying. I did apply a tiny bit of the VR pink shade here through my uh, lower lash line towards the inner part of the lid just to, you know, marry the burgundy and the um, champagne gold shade a little bit better. You can't really see it much, but it's there. So I figured I'd let you know. And then to keep up with the Pat McGrath theme going on on my uh, eyes, because also the liner and the mascara are both from Pat McGrath, I decided to throw in on my lips also the... Um, how are these called again? Lip fetish lip balms? The fetish lip balm in the shade Dark Devotion which is sort of a berry shade as well. I must say compared to my other balm from her, Tinted Balm, the shade Flash 3 Flash 3? I won't say Flash 3. Oh, I don't know. I'm starting to like mix them up with the numbers because I have a gloss in a flash shade and a balm in a flash shade and I'm starting to mix up the numbers. Anyway, I have another lip balm from her, like another one of her uh, tinted lip balms and it seems to me like this one is sheerer and less opaque in terms of color because I can see that some patches are a bit more pigmented than others. It still looks good, it's still very comfortable to wear but keep in mind that probably not all of them perform equally because I can tell you from my personal experience that this berry shade is a little bit less opaque compared to the other balm that I have from her. I'm really hoping that this look turned out different enough from my previous look using this green eyeshadow so that you forgive me that for the second time I'm using this eyeshadow as the like center spotlight of the uh, eye look because okay here's the thing last time I wore this eyeshadow was a week ago about a week ago and I had a I ended up having a really bad day they called from daycare because my son was really sick and he was crying inconsolably and we had to go pick him up from daycare and I know that that happens to parents all the time I'm fully aware of that but it was the first time that that ever happened to me and that I ever had to like pick up my son from daycare because he was that unhappy and that sick and then when I went to pick him up he was lying in the carriage his eye was totally inflamed he was red from crying he was really really unhappy and it just really broke my heart and I ended up not really enjoying the look even though I really really love how it turned out so I'm using this a little bit as an excuse to uh, wear this eyeshadow again because I just want to have like a better day I want to you know associate it with a better feeling throughout the whole day not be like oh yeah remember that day when I wore this beautiful look but then I ended up having a really crappy day I know it's a really silly thing but I just really felt like using this eyeshadow on a day when I'm going to enjoy it fully the whole day so it's actually a super simple look and it was a little bit prompted by the dress that I'm wearing. I'm wearing like a... whoops. I'm wearing like this really beautiful, like it's a really beautiful orange dress and one of my favorite things to combine in makeup is a green eye with an orange lip. So I decided to go super simple on the eyes. The look is really very very simple to execute because I applied a little bit of this uh, brown shade through my crease but like just a smidge and just a smidge is still quite a lot because this eyeshadow is quite dark and quite pigmented but I applied it like you can see a little bit here on the uh, very top of my crease that there's a bit of that shade and after that I just went fully into that uh, green lime green chartreuse shade over here I applied it through my crease as well as on my lid over a glitter glue because I just wanted it to take center stage it is such a beautiful shadow the thing is I don't even think my camera is ever going to pick up how beautiful this eyeshadow is in real life because aside from the beautiful glowy chartreuse green base this eyeshadow has a lot of pink sparkles to it like I see a lot of pink reflex and oh it's so pretty I love it basically this is the shade that you see all over my lid and through my crease and then I applied a little bit of a combination of this shade and this shade so the VR pink shade and this 
I don't know, champagne -y basic type of shade. I applied both of them because I feel like I did that for my previous look as well. VR Pink is just a little too dark to be in my inner corner to really like brighten it up. So I do really need to go into something like this or like this to uh, brighten this eyeshadow if I want to use it in my inner corners. And then on the lower lash line I just used this beautiful chocolate brown shade. In the last moment I decided that I wanted to add something a little more interesting to the look so I did apply the NYX Vivid Bright Eyeliner in the shade Vivid Escape here in the inner part of my lid. I just put like three small little playful dots there and I think this paired with the earrings and the chartreuse green and you know the orange that I have going on for my clothing, I think it works beautifully together and I really love how simple but how beautiful this look turned out. Oh, by the way, on my lips I'm also wearing an orange lipstick, of course, and I chose for Jeffree Star's Pumpkin Pie. I'm currently trying to pan this lipstick and it's a pretty lost cause, if you ask me. So I finally put the chartreuse green to rest, we're going to, you know, leave it aside for a while and we're going to focus on the rest of the shades in this beautiful palette. So today's look is a smoky look that's basically centered around this shade here, which is the uh, VR pink shade. If you guys have these palettes, then you know that the Sublime palette has a similar shade called VR Nectar, which is absolutely gorgeous. It's probably... Oh, do I dare say it's my favorite shade in the palette? Do I say it's better than the green? No, it's a tie. I love both of them. Anyway, the only difference is that VR Nectar has a little bit more of like peachy pink reflex and this one has a bit more of like pink violet reflex to it. So the shades are very very similar. This one just looks a little bit more pink. So to start off the look I used the uh, brown matte shade over here just because you gotta blend the black shade with something and this is really your only option kind of in this palette. So I did go for this shade, I put it very lightly through my crease and uh, like above my crease. Then I went in with the black shade and I used a pencil brush and I basically applied it like halfway through my lid and then dragged it along the uh, lashes more like towards the actual lash and then a bit more towards the inner corner but not all the way in and I try to like pull the dark shade a bit like a cat eye, a bit like a uh, liner I don't always succeed, I think today is definitely not one of my best attempts that being said, it doesn't really matter because after that I applied my glitter glue and I did go into the VR pink shade and I applied it all over my lid and a bit over the black shade. So basically towards the outer part of the eye, the VR pink shade is over the black shade and towards the inner corner it's just over the glitter glue over the bare skin. There is no other shade underneath it as a base. I think that's one of the really cool things about these shades. You can play so much with them depending on how you use them and over what kind of shade you use them. You can like... Um, pretty much apply them over any other shade, of course it needs to make some sort of sense, but you can pretty much throw them over any of the other shades to give them a little bit of a different base and to, you know, play and change the uh, reflex of the other shades. On my lower lash line I applied a blue Kiko eyeshadow stick. This one is in the number 17. It's a beautiful dark blue shade. And over top of that I applied another one of the topper shades, namely this violet, pink, shifting blue over here, which is absolutely beautiful. I'm hoping that my camera is somewhat picking up the uh, duochrome on it, probably not. Uh, but I did apply that over top of the blue pencil and just towards the edge, towards the corner here, I did apply a bit of that grey shade in combination with the black shade just so it connects a little bit better to the uh, outer V on my upper lash. I think the eye look is pretty simple. I did pair it with a pretty bright... Oh my god, my inner corners are watering like a motherfucker. What is up with that? On my lips I have an Urban Decay lipstick. This is the shade Alpha. It's one of their Mega Mattes. It's like this rosy red kind of shade. I did use it a couple of days ago and I kind of rediscovered it because I hadn't used it in a while. So I'm wearing it today because I feel like it pinks, pinks quite nicely. I feel like it pairs quite nicely with like the pinkish tones going on on my eyelids.
I'm not one to willingly wear a dark grey smoky eye or be inspired by the color silver or grey in any way. I do like wearing greys through my crease or maybe as an eyeliner or like a lower lash line accent but never ever on my lid. However, with this palette, I mean, there is a dark grey in here and if I want to break a little bit free from the usual colors that I would go for, I thought maybe I try to experiment a little bit with the gray and see how it turns out. I must say I'm actually quite pleased with uh, how this look turned out. So let me break it down for you. I started off with the uh, brown matte over here because aside from the black it is the only other matte shade and I do feel more comfortable putting something matte through my crease first. So I did go with this shade even though it's kind of dark and it's not exactly the best transition color. Um, however, I did go over top of that with the blending brush with the gray so you can't really see much of that. It's like just a little bit above my crease. I don't know if you can even see that translated on camera. But I covered most of it with the... Um, deep gray shade. So I applied the deep gray shade all over my lid basically in the outer corner, uh, all over the lid, all the way towards the inner corner. And then I wanted to put something over top of that and I decided to go for another shade that I'm normally not very inspired by. So I went in with the uh, Astral Orchid shade, the one over here. And I spritzed my brush very generously with Fix Plus. I do use a lot of Fix Plus when I use this shade. So I applied this shade really wet in the center of my lid. And then I did intensify a little bit the gray towards the uh, inner side of my eye so that it looks a little bit more like a halo eye uh, other than just a smoky eye with the um, pink on top. And I do really like how subtly that turned out. And then towards my inner corner I applied this Kiko eyeshadow stick in the shade 42. It is a light like lilac purpley sort of shade. The only reason I applied it is because I wanted to have a base for the this shade again because I wanted to apply that towards my inner corner again generously spritzed with fix plus then for my lower lash line I applied another one of my Kiko eyeshadow sticks this one is in the number 17 it is a gorgeous dark blue and over top of that I applied one of the topper shades the beautiful like purplish bluish duochrome over here it is one of my favorite shades in this palette and it um, I think it applied really beautifully my uh, brush was still a little bit wet from foiling this shade so it applied a little bit more foiled and metallic and I really like how that turned out and then towards the very inner side of my eye over here the inner corner just to connect the astral orchid shade and the blue I did apply a little bit like the tiniest touch of this um, magenta shade over here and I found that a pretty inspired move on my side I think that turned out really nice. I'm actually thinking about doing something similar but on the lid next time. We'll see how uh, I feel about it for my final look. But I do really like how this smoky eye turned out. Just to complete the look I applied my uh, NARS Audacious lipstick in the shade Anita. Anita is one of my favorite neutral lipsticks. It looks like this. And I very often wear it when I'm doing like smoky eyes. Alright you guys, so here we are, final look with the Subversive palette, again uh, something very smoky. I feel like I've come to the conclusion that this is just a very smoky palette. Would you agree? So for today's look I really wanted to focus on these two shades because I feel like they're some of the most stunning shades in the palette and I don't think I ever really put the spotlight on them in any of my other looks because I was so focused on that freaking green here. So for today I really wanted to focus on these two shades and I thought they would pair together because I don't know whether you can tell this bluish shade here is a duochrome and its base color is a very similar purple to this one. So let me start off from the beginning. The usual suspect, we have this uh, matte brown shade which I lightly put through my crease and blended it above. Then I took the uh, black matte shade and I just put it in my uh, outer corner, slightly extended it on my outer corners and then I applied glitter glue and I went consequentially into the blue shade towards the, the like outer part of the eye and the purple shade towards the inner part of the eye. Then I kind of flipped my brush back and forth between the two colors and also used my finger a little bit just in between the two shades so that they mix a little bit better and I think they they merge into each other really beautifully and especially I can see if I shift my eyes 
a little bit that this blue shade starts to become completely purple in a certain light so it looks like you have just one uh, shade on your lid but then when I turn into another light you can totally see the blue it's absolutely gorgeous in my inner corner I have this shade mixed in just a little bit with this champagne shade over here then on my lower lash line I kept it pretty simple eyeshadow wise I just applied this with a very thin smudger brush just um, pushed against my lower lashes and then I slightly blend it out with the uh, matte brown shade. The poppy part about the lower lash line is definitely the pencil which is the Colourpop cream gel liner in the shade Prance. It's a beautiful like sky blue. I absolutely love these cream gel liners from Colourpop because they apply really opaque even though they are in very pastel shades but they also stay really well in your waterline. I'm really impressed with these. To be honest I would definitely consider getting more colors and if I ever run out of this one I'm definitely getting another one. For my lipstick I kept it pretty girly and pretty like fitting with the rest of like the pinky bluey tones going on on the lid. This is the shade Disobedient from Urban Decay. It's one of their cream lipsticks and it's like a light yellow based pink. It's one of my favorite pinks to wear, especially in the spring summertime. And now that we have completed the final look, I wanted to give you a couple of thoughts that I have on the subversive palette from Pat McGrath because um, also in my previous video I've done like little reviews of uh, the eyeshadow palette because I've used them so intensively that I feel like I've gathered some thoughts along the way. Let me start off by saying I still absolutely love this palette. I do love the color story. But while I love it, I find it a little bit frustrating. I didn't really realize before I started using it so intensively that I find this palette um, frustrates me a little bit. The reason being that individually all of these poppy shades here are so pretty, so beautiful. Together they are a very surprising combination of colors. However, what I find very frustrating is that no matter what look I do, the only matte shade I can go into to start my look off with is this brown. And that's something that Pat does in all of her palettes. They all basically are centered around brown mattes with um, other poppy shades around them. Poppy or not so poppy. But with this particular... like I don't think that with the Sublime palette I have that feeling that I'm so frustrated that I'm lacking more colorful matte shades. Of course I would have really liked to have a dark forest green in there instead of the black, but I learned to appreciate the black, it's fine. Even in this palette I still love having the black shade. But do I feel like this black shade would have rather been better as a dark indigo blue or something with green tones or just something like a purple, something different than, you know, the brown and the black. I think the difference with the Sublime palette is that the Sublime palette has a couple of those like really satin shimmer shades that can almost pass as a matte if you uh, blend them through your crease but here you have neither of those shades because all of these shades they are very they're very intense you can definitely blend them through your crease I'm sure that's possible but for me personally I feel like I do have to start with a matte shade and it only has to be this one it just boils down to this is the only shade you can ever start your look with for instance I feel like this shimmery brown shade could have totally been left out of the palette and substituted by a somewhat more colorful transition matte shade. Just saying. And that is pretty much all you guys. I absolutely uh, loved doing this Project 5 wears together with Bia. Please go check out her video because I'm sure you're going to love the looks she created. She has a very similar style to mine and yet she always comes up with different and surprising looks. So please go check her out. As usual, don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you in my next video. Bye! We are doing a bonus look, you guys, because I have zero self-control. I promised you I'm not going to use that green shade again, and here we are. So I figured if I do a bonus look, you might not be too mad at me, because my five looks will be as diverse as possible. But I just wanted to show you a little something that I'm doing with the special shades from Pat McGrath, just in case you want to switch it up a bit. Partially this look is something you have already seen before because what I did on my upper lid is I started off with this transition shade and then I went in with the green shade on a fluffy brush and I basically blended it to my crease so I don't know whether you can see but I am sparkling all the way up till my brow bone almost because I don't really mind the special shades from Pat McGrath or just the metallic formula of Pat McGrath going up to my crease because I feel like it doesn't look unflattering. 
What I did next though is what's the interesting part about this look and something that um, I feel like I just wanted to share with you that I do on occasion. I went in with a combination of these two shades on my lid. So I did put a glitter glue down and then basically I started layering things. I put a layer of this one but like a thin layer. Then I went in with a layer of this uh, beautiful topper shade which uh, has a bit of like a goldish pinkish duochrome to it. Then I went in again with a layer of the green shade and I just like sort of layer the two shades. What you see right now is not one shade or the other, it's really a combination of the two. Like if you compare this to the two green looks that I did, you will see that the green here is much less vibrant and the reason for that is I kind of negated it with this um, pinky shade over here. But again, because you see the pink sparkles and the green sparkles over that dark base, I feel like it, it just makes it slightly different than those other two looks that I did. Then on my lower lash line, I went in first with this Kiko eyeshadow stick in the shade 36. It's like a light lavender purple shade with a bit of gold sparkles to it. And I went in with the purple magenta shade and I applied that all over my lower lash line. And then to make the lower lash line a little bit more interesting, I did paint my lashes with this Hema liquid eyeliner which is this gorgeous warm purple shade. Unfortunately, even those for, for those of you who do have access to Hema, Hema long ago discontinued this line of liners, which is really sad because they came in beautiful colors. Then, over top of that, I did go with one of my heavy metal gl glitter liners from Urban Decay. This one is in the shade Sticks and Bones. So then I painted my lashes and I thought, I'm missing a little bit more glitter. And then, I don't know whether you will be able to see, but, oh, wait for my camera to focus. I drew like a little triangle here towards the center of my lower lid space. So from afar, it looks a little bit like I have glittered ears. It's just a little touch, something subtle to make your look just a bit more interesting. And then on my lips, I went for a super bright magenta lipstick because I was just feeling something super bright and colorful. And this is the shade Anarchy from Urban Decay. It looks like this. It's one of my favorite like bright statement lipsticks to wear. If you prefer the cream formula, then definitely take Anarchy. If you prefer this color but in a matte formula, you can go for Menace because they're essentially the same color in different formulas.